Hello everyone, uh, welcome to my new video in the series of uh, Backup Exec. Uh, in today's video, I'll be showing you how you can uh, do the backup of your server and at the same time you can convert it into a virtual machine. So in case of disaster or something happens, you have uh, you have a VM to uh, go back that upon. <coughs> uh, before we start, just a brief uh, overview of the environment that I have right now. So the backup of uh, uh, I'll be doing backup of the server which is BD the name of the server it this is just a fresh install that I've did right now uh, the IP of my server uh, whose name is BD is 192.168.101.85 uh, the name of my domain is sharma.local and the name of my backup exec server is bsccm now I'm running these VMs uh, on my host machine which is hv1 it is not part of the domain so it's running totally separate just wanted to make sure that you understand that so let me just show you so I have this is my backup exec server this is my server that I'm gonna back that upon on this uh, uh, on the server and uh, let me show you the IP address of BD so so it's 192.168.101.85 okay so let's start let's go to the backup exec server so I am on BSCCM and as you can see over here that uh, uh, I have added the server uh, and uh, I'm gonna use the storage on this machine which I have already included so let me open the storage from the storage icon so this is the trial version of the backup exec that I have downloaded from veritas.com uh, website. So as you can see that uh, Grish Backup 3, that's the place I'll be backing it up. And eventually I'll be converting that to the virtual machine which I'll save on the on my uh, HV1 machine which is my host machine. Okay, if you don't know how to add the server or if you don't know how to add the storage pool, I'll recommend that you watch my previous video. Uh, that will be helpful. So let's go to the server which is BD which I want to back back up and uh, convert it to the virtual machine and uh, you right click and uh, under the backup there are a couple of options. What we'll do is that we'll back up to disk and simultaneously convert to the virtual machine. So you select that Just ignore all other servers over here uh, because uh, that's the one I previously added to the server. So just waiting for the windows to open. Okay, so as you can see, uh, there are some features that we have to configure. So I'll recommend that you select all to make sure that uh, you have all the credential to perform this operation. It's basically checking all the rights that we have. So I'm logged in as an administrator, so it should be fine with me. So let's see what happens. So the credential status is successful so we'll hit OK. So we are good over here. So let's go to the uh, backup option. Let me choose the option to edit. OK. 
Okay, so basically uh, now there's a window in which we'll configure. So as you can see, the template name is full. So we'll be doing a full backup. Name of the job is BD Backup. Uh, you can give whatever name you want to give. So let's do uh, full backup for BD, which is the name of the machine. We want to run straight away so we don't want to give any schedule uh, we are not gonna do any incremental backup so we can uh, uh, cancel that now after that let's go to the storage and configure where we want to back this so as you can see if you hit the drop down on the storage uh, as I told you that uh, we have 22.8 gig free on Grish backup 3 so I'll use this so this basically tells you for how long you want to keep the backup. So let's keep it for one week. You can choose accordingly depending on your environment and uh, network, notification and everything. We'll leave it to the default. So basically and files and folders. So this is a fresh install that I did on the BD server. So and neither it's a domain controller. So we don't want to have, uh, we don't have any NTD, NTDS.dit. Uh, partition in that so we'll just leave it to the file then folder so you hit ok ok and let's configure the option for the virtual machine so while it's doing the backup at the same time it will also convert that to the virtual machine so we'll configure that too Okay, so let's edit the settings on the virtual machine. So as you know that I'm running Hyper-V, so I'll, I'll select Hyper-V depending upon what you have. If you're running VMware, we can choose VMware too. So I'll choose uh, Hyper-V. So the name of my Hyper-V server name as I told you is HV1. So I'll uh, add that. And uh, I'll browse to the destination drive where I want to save the virtual machine so just want to show you one more time as uh, let me just go to the HV1 so this is the machine this is my host machine so as you can see this is HV1 it's not part of any domain so it's totally separate I'm just running VMs on this one and uh, on the C drive of this machine I'll be saving the uh, uh my uh, the vm that i'm gonna make so i'm just wait for it to load and out of that after that i will choose the c drive Should not take that long uh, just waiting for it and I will choose the drive uh, over here that's a destination driver path where my VM will be saved and uh, then you can give the name whatever the name you want to give for the virtual machine so by default it is VM BD I will leave this to the default and uh, then there is another setting which is full path of the hyper V integration component ISO image uh, let me just show you uh, Hyper-V integration services is basically a suite of utilities uh, which is used to enhance the performance of uh, the guest VMs and uh, you need to uh, 
basically uh, that's what uh, that's what uh, work together with the VM to enhance the performance on your uh, on your host so basically you need to give the path so by default let me just show you that again once so by default the path of that one is C uh, colon windows system 32 VM guest now because my uh, host is not part of the domain so what I've done is that I have uh, uh, copied this path and I have added this onto my uh, backup exec server so make sure you do that it's very similar to the VM tools which is there on the uh, on the VMware so just wanted to therefore I have uh, uh, put over here that that's the path you'll be needing uh, which I'll show you we'll, we'll browse to that particular path so let me let me just give first the path for the for my host machine so let's choose the C drive on my host machine uh, the name of the virtual machine is uh, VMBD which I'll leave it to the default and as I told you I have uh, just shared the path from my host machine uh, on the on the backup exec server so I'll give the path for that one too So as you can see on the C drive, uh, I have copied this VM guest.iso. So I'll give this path, and you hit OK. And uh, basically, uh, the server configuration. So the RAM on my actual server is 512, and the disk configuration is 12 gig on that one. So I'll leave it to that, and then you just hit okay and then you hit okay too so after this is done the you can track all this activity under the job monitor Now this will take some time for the backup to be done and then uh, at the same time it has to create the virtual machine too. So what I'll do is uh, I will pause the video and uh, once the job is done I'll be back. Okay so as you can see that the machine has been backed up and at the same time it has been converted to a virtual machine so I only had virtual machine but you can use this tool to convert a physical machine to a VM too so as you can see that's the name of the uh, virtual machine which has been created from BD to VM BD and you can also see the path that we gave and we were doing the settings so this is my HV1 computer and it's on the it's on the C drive so let's do a test over here now uh, Let's go to the VMBD and uh, connect it. Uh, by default, when the VM is made, uh, the internal switch is not here. Uh, so as you can see that there is no network card over here. Uh, let me just show you the setting on my actual VM. So as you can see that uh, it's been connected by the internal switch for testing that's the name I've given for the internal switch let's do this way uh, let me switch off the actual VM uh, and uh, let me turn it off force it and uh, let me 
go to the virtual machine go to the settings and I'll add the switch on this one which is uh, internal switch for testing on which all the machines are connected I'll apply and let's see if that machine boots up or not so let me power this on so I'm powering up the machine that I have made so as you know that by default took the name VMBD so let's see what happens So this is basically the complete replica of the actual virtual machine. So in your environment, in case you want to convert a physical to virtual, virtual to virtual or virtual to physical, you can use this tool uh, basically. So as you can see that our, uh, the machine, virtual machine that we made is booting up. So it makes sense that you don't get the NIC card and you have to add it manually because you don't want the two machines to be uh, having the same IP address and client trying to access that so there will be conflict in the production environment. So if you remember uh, the IP address of our actual VM was, let me open that again. So it was 192.168.1185 so what we'll do is that we'll give the uh, IP to the NIC on this VM and let me see if uh, our server can communicate with our backup exec server just for test purpose so as you can see it's applying computer settings and uh, just as you can see that on the job monitor it will show you that the job was completed successfully so it was full backup of uh, the machine which is the name BD was done and uh, under the host machine you can see that our VM is running right now with the RAM which we have given and obviously the hard drive was 12 gig that we specified which is the actual size of the uh, uh, VM that we had Okay, so it's just going through its uh, computer settings. So it's putting up for the first time. So let me log in. So I logged in as the administrator. Okay, so our machine has put it up now and uh, what I'll do is that uh, I'll give the IP uh, same IP of my actual VM on this one and we'll see that we'll be able to ping from our backup exec server or not. So let me go to the network properties. We'll give the IP address on this one. So 
so as we know that the IP address was 192.168.101.85 and I had the IP the DNS was actually just to let you know that uh, my actual domain controller on this machine is the machine which is BDC1 that's the, that's the machine which has the DNS uh, installed on this so that's the IP address of that machine and you'll hit OK and it's prompting that uh, this IP address has already been given so only one machine at the same time can have that so this is for the test environment so you can hit yes close it and let's see if we can uh, actually we need to enable this so it's enabling So basically you can see how easy it is to do the backup and then convert to the uh, VM if you want. Uh, I, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.